telescopes come in all shapes and sizes, and cost. But what makes a good planetary telescope? Most people look at four main attributes. First is the aperture. It's how wide the telescope opening is. Bigger lets in more light and lets you see a higher resolution. Long focal length provides a high magnification. Unlike deep sky objects, planets are really tiny. Saturn at its largest is almost 100 times smaller than the moon, whereas the moon is six times smaller than the Andromeda galaxy. Long focal ratios allows for sharper images, and if you have a large aperture telescope, the telescope can get really big and heavy. The quality of the optics is the fourth in line of importance because although not required, it could mean the difference between seeing something blurry with the low contrast to seeing something much sharper. Honorary mention for having a good mount, especially at high magnifications. A computerized mount will help you keep the planet in view without much work, but a manual mount with good slow motion controls can also be just as satisfying. The six telescopes we'll be looking at are the Ascar 71F, the Mead ETX 90, the Celestron Nexstar 6SE, the Celestron Edge HD 8, a 16 inch Mead LX 200, and a four and a half inch tabletop Dobsonian, the Orion Funscope. In this video, I'll focus on what makes a good planetary telescope, and I'll mostly talk about my visual experiences through them, but we'll also look at images that were taken through those telescopes and the Ioptron iCam 464C, which is an excellent planetary camera. I'll have another video dedicated to this camera specifically because it honestly deserves its own video. A huge thanks to Ioptron for lending this to me. I've been having a lot of fun using this for planetary season, if you attended my last live stream where I showed you Jupiter, this was the camera that was used for that session. One of the biggest misconceptions that I come across from people who look through a telescope for the first time at a planet think that it should look something like this, when in reality it looks very different. This is a little bit closer to what you'll see with your eyes, but even this isn't fully accurate. This is a stacked and processed image of Jupiter. Our eyes see very differently, and I believe that when we look at it, planets through telescopes, our eyes see better because we have almost instant high dynamic range with our eyes, whereas with a telescope, you have just that one range. Of course, you can do HDR with multiple exposures, but it's not the default. Our eyes are special. So any images that you see here today, I can assure you that when I looked through the telescopes, it looked even better. The Ascar 71F has a 71 millimeter aperture with a focal length of 490 millimeters, making it an F6.9 telescope. It's a quadruplet, which means that it has excellent optics and it costs about $600. It's a bit small for planets, but visually, Jupiter and Saturn looked amazing through it, especially at higher magnifications with my 3.2 millimeter eyepiece. That kind of pushes the magnification to about 150x. And if you look at this video taken with the iCam 464C, you can see Jupiter here. This is a tiny itty bitty thing, but it looks fine. But I could stack it and stabilize it it looks a little bit better and I can further post process it even just a few minutes and make it look a little bit more recognizable. For Jupiter and Saturn, I would call this a decent planetary telescope, but objects like Venus, Mars are too small for any kind of detail and Uranus and Neptune are out of the question. This is an excellent white light solar and lunar telescope. The Mead ETX 90 is next and it's a Moxitov Cassegrain telescope or MCT for short. This one has a 90 millimeter aperture with a 1250 millimeter focal length, making it an F13.8 telescope. This is a classic telescope that appears on Facebook Marketplace quite often between $100 and $250. This telescope will get us much closer to our planets and should be a much sharper view. But the quality of the optics isn't as good as the Ascar, but the other specs kind of make up for it. This video of Jupiter shows that it looks pretty good, which I can further process and stabilize, and a few minutes of post-processing lets us see something really, really nice. Visually speaking, Jupiter looks bigger and sharper. A 10 millimeter eyepiece gave me a magnification of 125X, and it offered an excellent view of Jupiter and his Galilean moons. But the optics on this isn't as good as my Ascar 71F, so I noticed some fuzziness. It could have also been that I wasn't in perfect focus. This is not as easy to focus as the 71F with an electronic focuser, so that probably could have been my fault as well. But it's really easy to use at medium magnification, and like the 71F, this is a great Jupiter and Saturn telescope, along with the moon and the sun, but you'll be disappointed if you're trying to look at anything else. Next telescope we have is the Nexstar 6SC, which is a six inch telescope. I've had this since 2012, this was actually my first real telescope and I would not recommend any beginner to start with an SAT. 
get a tabletop Dobsonian or a regular Dobsonian instead. This is a 150 millimeter aperture with a focal length of 1500 millimeters, making it a native F10 telescope. It costs about $900 brand new now for the telescope and a computerized alt as mount. The F ratio is slightly less than the ATX90, but the larger aperture, longer focal length, and much better optics make the planet look amazing. Looking at this video of Jupiter, we can see how good it looks. Even under poor seeing conditions, post-processing makes it look even better. A 10 millimeter eyepiece is a great sweet spot at this magnification of 150X. My most powerful usable eyepiece with this is a seven millimeter eyepiece giving me 214X magnification. And this has been my Star Party telescope for the entire 12 years that I've had it. And I can tell you that the planets through this look amazing. And believe it or not, a six inch SCT is on the smaller side of SCTs. I think this is an excellent planetary telescope. Next up is the Celestron Edge HD8, which is an eight inch or 203.2 millimeter aperture with a focal length of 2032 millimeters, also making it an F10 telescope. Just like the last SCT, the optics on this is excellent. It's actually even better than the 6SE. And the price of $1,600 just for the telescope itself reflects that. But this is another excellent planetary telescope and it checks all four boxes. It has a wide aperture, eight inch. It has a long focal length, 2000 millimeters. It has a long focal ratio, native is F10. And it has excellent optics. The Edge HD optics, this line of telescopes is an excellent series of telescopes. The large aperture gives me better resolution and contrast compared to the other telescopes we've seen so far. Visually, Jupiter looks great. Through a camera, this is what Jupiter looks like on a bad night. We can see a shadow of Ganymede near the bottom. When I stack the best frames, I see this. And with just a few minutes of processing, I can make it look even better. This is another excellent planetary telescope for both visual and astrophotography. This telescope is frequently found on the used market. That's where I got mine. And as you can see, the corrector plate needs to be cleaned a little bit. Now the next telescope is a monster. It's a 16 inch SCT. The Mead LX200 16 inch is a 406 millimeter aperture, 4064 millimeter focal length F10 observatory telescope. It's located at my local astronomy club, the Amateur Telescope Makers of Boston, and it's a monster. It is from the 90s and today's version costs a little over $10,000 just for the telescope or about $18,000 for an entire setup. Since Mead and Orion have gone out of business, these may be impossible to find in the future. And if you guessed that this was the best planetary telescope that we're going to be looking at tonight, you would be right. Jupiter and Saturn looked amazing through this. The only words I can think of when I saw Saturn for the first time through this is holy shit. This view here is the size of Jupiter without any cropping. Even with the wide angle 40 millimeter eyepiece, Jupiter looked significantly large and it looked really bright and it looked sharp. Some post-processing shows just how good Jupiter looks. This is not even as good as how Jupiter looked through an eyepiece. Calling this an excellent planetary telescope is an understatement, but we also need to understand its limitations. So with such large telescopes comes with its own problems. So for example, this thing is a permanent setup. Like we're not moving this anywhere. This is extremely heavy. The second thing is that at relatively high magnification with this, the slightest atmospheric disturbances will be picked up by the optics. So it will really be like looking through a glass of water if the atmosphere is pretty turbulent. And I really wish this thing came with electronic focusing because focusing this was incredibly difficult. It had, you know, a coarse focuser, it had a fine focuser for the coarse focuser, and then it had an even finer focuser for the, for a draw tube that comes out of it. You'd think that with, you know, fine, fine focusing, it would be easy, but with less than excellent seeing, it's really difficult to focus on anything. And with such a narrow field of view, you need a really good finder. A red dot finder won't do. So this one has a really nice Telrad, as well as an 80 millimeter guide scope kind of thing with the illuminated reticle that you can look through, which makes things a lot easier, but also makes it a lot bulkier. And if you have a large telescope, that's additional costs, additional things to worry about. So I'm kind of glad this is an observatory telescope Although I want one in my backyard, I, I, it will probably drive me crazy just setting things up, calibrating it, and making sure it is, it's up and running. All right, and finally, we're gonna talk about the Orion Funscope. This is a tabletop Dobsonian. It's the little brother to a regular Dobsonian, which unfortunately I don't have because I don't have any space. 
And this one is a four and a half inch 500 millimeter or F 4.4 reflector. This is called a fun scope uh, because it is a fun scope. And I think this is probably, if you're starting out with astronomy, especially even planetary astronomy, I think something like this is what you want to start with because it's super easy to use. You plop it down on a table, it rotates, you know, in uh, azimuth, and it also goes up and down in altitude pretty easily. The biggest learning curve with something like this is collimating, but you can learn that fairly easily. This one has pretty big knobs that you can use. You can also switch, switch these out for easier knobs called Bob's knobs. But whenever someone comes to me asking me, hey, how do I start into astronomy? This kind of telescope is what I would, what I would recommend. Although not the fun scope specifically, just tabletop Dobsonians. And the aperture here, although small, it's still bigger than both my Ascar 71F and the Mead ETX90 MCT. So it gathers quite a bit of light. And something like this also gives you the biggest bang for your buck. So this was pretty cheap. And when it comes to observing, the biggest issue you may have with this is tracking objects through the sky. Because this is manual, you'll have to manually track it in space, which is pretty easy to do if you're using not the highest powered eyepiece. Like if you're using a 12 millimeter or 15 millimeter eyepiece, you can, it'll be in view for uh, maybe a minute or so before you, have, before you have to track it and you can get ahead of it and then let it come into view. I don't use this for photography so I didn't even attempt to take any images with this. All I can tell you is that Jupiter looked pretty good, Saturn looked okay. Uh, this is not great for Mars. I did try this on Mars. Mars looks like a bright orange star, no detail at all. It is a short focal ratio, so it's an f4.4, so it gathers light extremely fast. So Jupiter and Saturn look much brighter than any of my other setups because the the next fastest scope I have that I used here was actually my 71F at f6.9. And I would say that this is a decent planetary telescope. It's also great for deep sky objects such as globular clusters, some open clusters, and if you're in dark enough skies, you can see some DSO. Uh, I haven't tried Orion from my backyard, but I have from a friend's backyard who lives in a Bortle 6. And we can actually see Orion with the, with the cheap O3 filter. Or the structure of Orion looks pretty, pretty nice. So we looked at six different telescopes and we learned a little bit about the differences in them that make them good or decent or okay planetary telescopes. Of course, in astronomy, bigger is almost always better, but bigger also comes with its own problems, as we've seen with the 16-inch SCT. And it doesn't really matter what kind of optics you have, whether it's a really bad telescope, some cheap binoculars, or a stock camera lens. You can still observe planets in different ways, such as just seeing the Galilean moons of Jupiter, seeing the ears of Saturn, seeing a really bright star, which would be... Mars. And in certain cases, you can also see phases of Venus. I hope this video was a little bit informative. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you want to learn how I processed the images of Jupiter that you saw here, I do have a video on astrosurface where I went over the entire stacking process. And whenever I get back out to the Atmop field and use the 16 inch on Mars, I'll be sure to post a photo of Mars. Thank you for watching and until next time, clear skies.